everyone. So before we begin with the video, if you'd like to make a small request, kindly subscribe to our channel and like the video if it helps you. And also share it with your friends who may benefit from it. Hey guys, so in this video, we'll be showing a closed loop um, speed control of a DC motor, which will be mathematically modeled completely. In the subsequent videos, we'll be doing the physical model. So the previous video we've shown the previous videos just shown the DC chopper uh, that is the buck converter mathematical modeling and um, the mathematical modeling for DC motor as well. So we will not be covering that in this video. It's already there in the other videos. You can have a look at that. Um, here you have the various outputs of the DC chopper is shown in the scope. And now coming back to the mathematical modeling of the motor side, you can take down these values. So this pause the screen and take down these values. So now to begin with, to design the outer speed control loop, you will need a some block which will take the input as the reference speed and the uh, it will subtract the reference speed with the instantaneous speed of the motor. So you'll take a constant block. So we'll take the instantaneous speed control of the motor. And now to design the speed control of the DC of the DC motor. Um, we will need an PI controller. So for the PI controller, we'll need two gain blocks as well as an internal block. So they will, they will be added. That is P plus K into integral. So we'll take the values as 1.6 for P and uh, proportionality constant is 1.6 and the integral constant K is 16. And you'll also need an integrator or an integral which yeah and now you'll need a sum block that adds the two so you'll get k plus pi p plus ki now we we'll also need a saturation block to prevent the prevent noises and spikes unnecessarily so we're limited to plus 30 and minus 30 and the output of this is the reference current. So this output will be given to the input of the speed controller. Yeah, so now we need a transfer function block, which will act as a filter, which is the first stage of the current controller. It will be one E power minus five plus one at the denominator and um, one in the numerator of the transfer function block. And the input of the transfer function block would be the armature current of the DC motor. And the output would be the subtract, will, sub, will be subtracted so this has an initial output. So ideally, we do not need a block with initial output. So we'll find the transfer function block without the initial output, a simple transfer function block. So we'll also need a delay at the out at the end of the current controller, and this would give the gating signals for the DC chopper. 
So once this is done, we'll uh, create a scope to see the various outputs. We'll take a go-to tag to constantly measure the uh, reference speed provided as well as a front to tag to give it to the scope. This will reduce the unnecessary connections across the simulation and makes the simulation look, neat, look neater. So we put a DMUX to see how if, um, to compare the reference speed as well as the instantaneous speed. Now we'll run the simulation for 10 seconds and have a look at whether or not the speed reaches um, 50 radians per second. So as you can see, the speed does reach 50 radians per second for a given talk. Now we'll test it for uh, varying torque as well as varying speed, whether or not the controller can keep up with the varying speed and torque that input references that are provided. So before that, we'll just change the labels. So we'll keep it at 50 in the beginning and uh, we'll change the simulation to 1000 seconds so the simulation doesn't finish before we can actually make the changes. So now as you can see the simulation is running. Um, we just open the scope and enlarge at that section. So it settles down to 50 radians per second. Now if we change the value of the input reference speed it should go it, the speed should also change so yeah as you can see the motor reference speed has been changed and the motor the speed controller uh, brings the speed of the motor to the reference speed now we can test it for a varying torque condition So as you can see, once the torque is varied, there's a small disturbance in the speed and the speed controller can bring it back to the reference speed as well. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. In the subsequent video, we will make the physical modeling of the speed control. And yeah, so kindly like the video if it helps you, share it with your friends and do check out our other videos as well. Thank you.